traffic safety officers in New Brunswick, New Jersey, have taken several steps to improve the safety of their crossing guards and the children they help on their way to and from school. One of the problems we had over here, which was brought to our attention by one of our crossing guards, the large amount of kids, they have over a thousand kids crossing at this intersection. Um, she brought it to my attention. I then came out to the location. We tried to see what we could do to improve the location. Um, I advised my supervisor about the situation that we had. Going from there, we brought off cones to the location to try to improvise to make it safer. Uh, with the help of the Board of Ed, the help with the city, we were able to close a street off so it's a lot safer for the kids to cross and made it easier for the crossing guards to get the kids across the street. Um, in tail as well, we also added another crossing guard to the location, so now we have two crossing guards here. On Livingston Avenue, where there's four lanes all the way down, when you're out there by yourself trying to do all four, it's very difficult. So we found out by adding another guard, they both work together, it goes a lot smoother. Kids know to wait because they know which one to look for. We use two guards on a multi-lane roadway because it's safer for the children, it's safer for the guards, and it's safer for everybody else. Crossing guards have been instructed to blow their whistle as they are stepping off the curb and to give a rapid blast if they feel as though the driver is not preparing to stop. In some cases, drivers may be distracted or may not be able to see or anticipate a crossing. The whistles ensure that drivers can hear the crossing guards as they attempt to stop traffic. Building my character with my crossing guards is huge. At the end of the day, it's all about the children. We want to make sure they get across safely, we want to make sure they get to school safe, and they get home safe. It's not an easy job. It's not made for everybody. The crossing guards that we have, they know their kids, they know the parents there. Anytime they have any kind of concerns and they let me know, we try to fix it right away. You know, and I take high priority in that. Anytime there's a, a pothole or anything that's in a crosswalk that makes it unsafe for children to cross or anybody to cross, the crossing guards will notify us when we contact our public works. So the moment we contact them, they fix it up right away. We told our guards, never confront parents, just write a plate down. Our crossing guards, they have memo pads with them. A lot of them carry it with them with their pen, and the moment they get a car that goes by them, speeding by, going through a stop sign, um, arguing them for no reason, they would jot the plate down, description of the vehicle, what the person looked like in the time, and they would notify us. Um, they would tell us if it's the first time they've seen the car do it or if it's multiple times. And most of the time when we've had this happen, we've gone to the residence, spoken to the driver, or called them up. We've never had another problem with it again. This crossing guard took it upon herself to improve safety at her crossing. So one of the guards that we have right now, she has her corner working like clockwork. She's trained the parents with their children to wait for her until she's ready to cross them. The kids do not move until she's out there, blows the whistle, has all the cars to a complete stop, and then she directs them to cross over. The kids know to wait. She'll see the same kids with their younger brothers and sisters, and they stand by, and the kids are saying, wait, wait, she'll tell us when it's safe to go. So that's how much she has that whole intersection trained, to where the parents, the kids, and their younger siblings are all waiting until she tells them. With the speed, we had a lot of cars going way too fast. So I'd bring out cones to my crossing guard, we put them on those outer posts or on the shoulder lane, so now cars won't go there, because the moment they see a cone, they have to come back into a single lane. So that eliminated cars flying on the shoulder side. Um, another concern was my crossing guard brought up in another area in the morning, it's very dark still. And people can't see because the, the light, there's not much light out there. So what we did and what my crossing guard also brought up was lights on the stop sign, lights on her, she would use them on her hands. And she's all lit up like a Christmas tree, but she was able to be seen. Cars can see her, parents would be able to see her and cars would stop because they see it. We put some on the cones at that area so they were able to be lit up and you could see them from a distance so people could stop. We have a pedestrian safety grant which comes out every year and we'll have an officer uh, in plain clothes. They would cross the street, we'll be on the other ends stopping the vehicles because they're not stopping for the pedestrian to cross one. So we would take measurements in that way by a school so people know you gotta stop. Not just for kids, for parents and everybody. Um, one of the other things is we had a lot of parents parking their cars in crosswalks. The guards would tell them to move, so the parents wouldn't move. 
we would sit at those intersections and make sure cars would move. When they saw us, they would go. But to make it continue to last, that's when they brought in delineators and we put them by the crosswalk so nobody can park there, they'll have to move further up. A few years ago, children were struck by a vehicle while they were crossing Livingston Avenue. From that time on, the police were in communication with the city, the county, and the Board of Education. In a roundtable discussion, it was decided that two road diets would be implemented. The police department would use temporary measures to block off a travel lane until the road diets were permanent. In addition, the city passed an ordinance to close off streets during school arrival and dismissal times. Well, some of the changes that were made were it was four lanes. It was very difficult for my crossing guard to get people over. They'll be able to stop one part of the road, but not the other lane. We saw how the roads were going. We were able to bring in cones. We put a police car in there with cones going around it to bring it down from two lanes to one lane on each side. And we saw that that worked. Um, like I said, we brought up to the city, the Board of Ed, you know, I brought it to my supervisor and they said, okay, let's go with it. We tried it out for two weeks. We saw how it was safer for the kids. We saw how the guards said it was safer for them to do their jobs. So that's how okay, we were able to implement it. Kids are going home safe and they're happy. If they're happy, I'm happy. It makes for a good day.